We got the Ram Promaster sitting right behind me a few weeks ago. We already took it on a 10 day road trip across the country to Glacier National Park. And today we are officially starting the converting process. When we got back from our trip, we kind of had a good idea of what we knew we wanted in the van and the layout. So a few days ago, we took the time to really plan out exactly what we want in the van and where we want it. So now that we know that, we can actually start on the base level things. So right now we are working on putting the bed frame together, which seems to be the easiest part of this entire van project. And then we are going to focus our efforts on getting the floor together. For our bed frame, what we did is we got these L brackets and then they just have two holes in them. Then we can put them in these holes that are already there. And then from there, we'll put some two by fours on top and screw everything in place. All right, now we just screwed them into place um, and then we'll tighten them down so they don't do this. After we put the plywood on top, it'll help them to all sit flush. All right, that worked. We did get a little bit ahead of ourselves on this project. We were just excited to get something done. Well, we might have to take this back out so that we can clean the whole floor out, clean the walls off, and put the floor down. But for now, we really like it. Today, we took off the bed frame that we made last time, and now we are kind of really just starting from square one, grinding off all the crap on the bottom base of the van. There's definitely a technique to it. A lot of our projects have gotten deterred for a lot of reasons, and most of them make sense. But never in my life did I ever think we couldn't paint the inside of our van because of a ladybug invasion. They're already in well, the van. They're, they're on the van. They're, they're in the van. Everywhere. There are a hundred on the van at least. More than that. Oh, probably. there's. I mean, there's thousands. There's thousands flying around. I don't know if we're gonna be able to paint today. They're everywhere. They just showed up. I feel like they're multiplying. Like when I walked out there, I was like, oh, Erica, look, there's like five on the side of our van. And now there's like a thousand. Maybe tonight when the sun goes down a little bit, it'll get cold and they'll all kind of die, but then we won't really be able to paint. We waited until the sun went down. Oh gosh, I have the hiccups. This is going to be hard. We waited until the sun went down and all the ladybugs are gone. <laughs> so it's time to paint the floor. Yesterday we spent some time scrubbing the floor and so much stuff came off. Now it's clean. A blank canvas. <laughs> a blank canvas for us to start painting. So the reason why we're painting the bottom of the van is to really prevent rust and any water damage, further damage. And we're using the same paint that we used on the trailer of our teardrop camper. So this should be pretty strong stuff. Today, we are patching some of the holes because we took out the floor anchors so now there's kind of holes in our floor so we're patching those up and then we are potentially getting into sound deadening slash insulating the floor before we can start putting the base floor layer down no water will be able to come up through there essentially what josh did is he took this material which we had left over from the teardrop project and cut them up into little squares to patch up the holes on top and then he glued them down and we're just pressing them down but this stuff comes in handy so i guess that's a tip to always keep the scraps of whatever material material you have because you never know when you're gonna need to use it next step we're gonna do is we got this basically sound deadening material it's what is already up there i believe or something very similar to what the last guy put up to make the van quieter, but mainly since it's thin, it'll give us the most headroom available. We won't be lifting the floor up really high, but this will help quiet the van as well as fill some of these gaps. We almost finished putting down all of that sound deadening insulation material. There's a couple more spots. We have to wait for the glue to dry from the patches. Once that's dry, we can lay down the last couple sheets of sound deadening. Then we're ready to start templating and cutting out the floor to go on top, as well as some wall insulation we might be able to get to soon. So hopefully Saturday we can knock out some projects. Today's goal is subfloor. We have a large piece of composite material that we wanna use as the subfloor, but we're gonna make templates out of cardboard, lay it down, trace everything out, and then cut out the shape with the jigsaw 
and hopefully just slide it and drop it into place and that'll be our subfloor. Here's my little template for our first corner. It's pretty close. There's a little bit of a gap here because I used this thing to kind of trace the route of the wall. It ended up being a little bit fatter right there. So the template's pretty close, but what we're gonna do next is add some tape to the sections that are a little bit off to kind of correct it. And then hopefully we can kind of flip this over and do the other side next and then transfer this onto our subfloor. So we decided that this corner is gonna be our front left corner and that is the one we want to do all of our measurements off of this side won't get cut we'll probably have to trim off the other side but for now that means that this lines up with this edge and this lines up with the bottom edge and then we can trace it and this is the area we're going to want to cut out first now we can start doing the other side next, and I think that's what we'll do is maybe lay it all out with Expo Marker, take all of our measurements, see if it all looks good before we make any cuts, because we only have one piece of this, and we want to make sure it's right and double check all of our measurements before we start to trim everything up. The top portion is all cut out, and we are moving on to the wheel wells. Josh made half of a wheel well, so when you put it down here, it fits perfectly and what's awesome is that if you just flip it it fits all around each side of the wheel well so this is the only template we have to make for the wheel wells and then cut it out we just finished tracing our template onto our subfloor now we're going to cut them out and uh, see how it looks all right everything is notched out on the subfloor and tomorrow we will lay it down Today is the day that we are testing out if the subfloor fits in the van. What do you think, Josh? Do you think it'll fit on the first try? It might be snug, which is the goal, but hopefully not too snug. Uh-oh. That was my fear. Shimmy it along one of the metal rooms. Please fit. Please fit on the first try. It's not going to. Why? Think. All right, we're really close here. You can see we have a little bit more to go. The couple areas that are rubbing are still here in this front corner and then back here at the wheel, rubbing the wheel well there and in the corner. Now we just have to mark the areas and unfortunately probably take the whole thing back out. The good news is getting it back in will be easier the next time because I think we kind of understand a better process now. All right, we just sanded a little bit off the edges and put it back into place. Let's see how this thing looks. What the heck? A little too much. Round two. Let's try it. Perfect, right there. Okay. We're caught on something in the middle. Oh, we're so close. We think this one will actually work because Josh actually cut some of the sections that needed to be shaved off off. Let's try it. Yeah. Alright, Remember earlier this week when I was like, you think we could get it in one shot? This thing's heavy. This thing is difficult to get in and out of this van. I hurt my shoulder. We still have to notch stuff out. There's like one other little spot that we have to notch out that we didn't consider beforehand. I'm it just... would work, but it's lifted up off the ground a little bit, a little bit. So we want to make sure that it's sitting flat, flat. It worked. Now we have to go down, but it is sitting there with no air gap in between. It's done. We don't have to take it back out again. We can glue it down and it, it will be permanently there. We're actually gonna glue it right now and just have that down. And from here, we can start doing everything else we need to do from wiring to insulation. Down. We wanted to give a quick shout out to Bouge RV for sending us their latest Valentine's Day edition of their 12 volt, 23 quart mini fridge. If you're subscribed to our channel, you will know that we love to camp. And some of my personal favorite parts about camping are being in nature, spending uninterrupted quality time with Josh, and being able to cook, whether that's over a fire or over our camping stove. And 
so far, this mini fridge has made our life so much easier when it comes to camping. The fact that this cooler can hook up to either 12 volts, 24 volts, or 120 volts makes it perfect for our van and it does it all efficiently without draining our battery. This cooler also has a special technology which makes it cool down to the ideal temperature within 16 minutes of plugging it in and it stays cold and has the capability to be a freezer as well as a fridge depending on the temperature that you dial it into. The cooler has multiple buttons which our last one did not where I can adjust the temperature to the perfect degree that I need it to be as well as USB charging on there and it has settings to put it into eco mode or change from Fahrenheit to Celsius depending on what you prefer. So whether we're on a massive road trip across the country or having a little date for something like Valentine's Day, we know this cooler will keep our food cold, draw minimal power, and is so lightweight and portable that we're able to move it wherever we want. So if you're interested in getting it for yourself, for your van or setup, go to the description below and click on our link for a discount. Today we are in Pittsburgh with Josh's family and we brought the van with us. We brought our insulation that we actually had left over from the teardrop project. We just have some downtime right now on the weekend, and I think we're gonna try to fill up the van as much as possible with this insulation. Here's the general plan. We got our foam insulation, foam board insulation, which is not flexible enough to hit all these curves and everything. So we're gonna cut it into kind of big rectangles and then use our 3M high strength contact adhesive to spray the wall, spray the foam. We can see like there's some rectangle areas. We'll do a rectangle here. And then once we get the Thinsulate, we can kind of fill in any of these holes and crevices to insulate the rest of it. We're back at our house and continuing the insulation process. We bought and received some 3M insul- no. We bought and received some 3M Thinsulate. Can't get that right. So we're kind of doing a combination of this stuff and the purple insulation that we have been working with. Hopefully today, we will be finishing our insulation and starting on framing. Good. You good? Yep. All right. Oh my gosh. Wow, this looks so good. It feels like we have a home. This is huge. While Josh starts wiring, I am just cutting insulation to fit the little pieces surrounding the van that haven't been filled yet with the purple insulation. So like this, for example, will go in a random place where the purple insulation won't really fit well. Um, so we're kind of tag teaming here, or I guess like multitasking, and just fill in as much as possible for the day. Lunch break. We have been working out here for quite a few hours now. <laughs> what feels like nonstop, I mean, we took a little bit of a lunch break, but this has probably been the most productive day we've had on this band so far. It's beautiful out. Josh has gotten almost everything wired up. I've gotten almost all of the insulation in, and before we know it, we're gonna be framing. I pretty much finished the wiring in the van, uh, which I didn't expect to get done today, but just the order of things, it kind of seemed like a good time to do it. And there's a lot more wires than I thought. Here's all the 12 volt wiring that we did. I still have to get some wiring for the 120 volt for like outlets and stuff. They all run up through the van frame and go to their perspective locations. Plan is we'll have a light switch right by the door and that wiring runs up to where we're gonna have a puck light here. We're gonna have our fan here, then another puck light, and one more puck light above the bed. And so we have wiring for each of the puck lights, wiring for the fan, a light switch. Down here, we have wiring for a water pump. And then over here, we have wiring for reading lights kind of above our heads. We're gonna do some puck lights or LED strip above our little seating area that we talked about. Um, underneath the cabinets we're gonna put here. And then another one, another LED strip underneath our feeding area where this cabinet goes. But this gives us flexibility to always wire up stuff later. I wanted to put more wire down than I could even think of right now so that if I ever wanna add something in the future and the walls are up, I won't have to feed it through the walls because that'll be almost impossible 
once the walls are up. The van is essentially fully insulated. The only parts that we've left uninsulated would be the section where we're going to be putting our window, of course, and then these back sections up here. We used every last piece of our 3M Insulate and we still have a full sheet of the purple insulation plus another quarter of it. Josh is finishing up the last of wiring for the outlets. All right, we have three more wires over here that are gonna be hooked up to our inverter so that we can get normal 120 outlets in this van. So I have three spots we're gonna be putting outlets at. And the little hack I discovered was I got an extension cord and chopped it up, 100 foot extension cord and chopped it up as opposed to the wiring was a lot more expensive. Well, online it was more expensive. In the store it was about the same. It was just a little bit cheaper to go with an extension cord wire over just plain wire. Just make sure you get the right gauge. I went with 14 gauge wire. 14 gauge will be enough for outlets and anything that we do um, here, especially if we have three outlets in here. So, the three spots we're doing one is we're doing an outlet at the foot of the bed, somewhere in this area, on this wall. The next spot we're gonna put an outlet is in this dining room area where the seating is gonna be. And the third place we're gonna put one is in the kitchenette area so that we can um, power any kitchen stuff we want, charge any kitchen stuff we want. And since it's right next to the door, we can run an extension cord out to like a campsite or anywhere else if we wanna power something else and have easy access to it from here. Another evening where the sun's coming down, we're trying to put start the framing process. We're gonna add some framing boards to the ceiling. We went to Menards and got one by four pine wood. And then to run my wires through, I ended up just drilling a hole through it. And now to mount the thinner wood, we have thicker wood for framing, but to mount the thinner wood, we're just using drywall screws that are meant to go through metal. So we'll just try to avoid the holes and send this through our wood up into the uh, metal framework. The three metal beams are pretty straightforward. Front and back are gonna be a little bit different. The front sticks down a little bit and then has this carpeting here. So we used a thinner board, basically just a piece of plywood that we had laying around. We're gonna screw it here to kind of pinch the carpet up there. And then the back one, we'll get to that next. We'll need a thicker board probably. Front, there is uh, almost no uh, wiggle room for a drill. So I switched to my impact with a really tiny bit and hopefully it'll give us enough room to kind of get up in there. A lot of other people use the 90 degree chucks, but I don't have one of those. Um, the slight trick, we kind of got it started, but if you have your impact, you kind of got to do one of those. So just the tip of it sticking out, then an impact can barely fit in there. That just seems so weird. We are on the back end our last board. There's a lot of issues with doing this back piece with the curves and not a frame to kind of drill into without going through the roof. So what a lot of people do is glue a board up there and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna glue a two by four up there and it'll come to pretty much the perfect height as this one. But to hold the glue up there, uh, a lot of people might not know this, a lot of people might know this, but many clamps can pop out you can switch sides and then it can push against itself instead of pull things together so what we did is we cut a board that's 70 inches long it spans there then we can put a clamp here and clamp against the ceiling and then we'll be able to push a board up there and glue it in place so that is our plan right now now we're going to cut the board get some glue on it and uh put it into place. We flipped this piece of wood up so that it was stronger because it was bending in a lot of weird ways. Well, it looked like it was dipping obviously in the middle as expected, but because it was dipping in the middle up here, it wasn't pressed as firmly as I wanted it to be. So we flipped it upright and it does, it is a lot of force because it is bending the metal a little bit, but that's how I know it's touching the roof and we'll have a solid connection. We've finished the ceilings framing. We haven't done the sides at all for the walls, but we decided to feel a little bit more productive today. We're going to cover these sections off with some wood, which Josh just, well, we just cut it. So depending on how quickly this goes, which we already cut one out and we're gonna screw it in, uh, we might cover like the top portion, but we're gonna put this in and 
have something look a little bit finished. It's gonna be a little big because we haven't rounded the corners. <gasps> That'll look so great. I am working on doing the corners of the door <clears throat> and I realized I could take all my hole saws, I have a bunch of different ones, and kind of line it up with the edges and see what radius curve it is. I got the inch and three quarter and it seemed to line up perfect with the back door radiuses. So I should be able to just set it on the wood and draw a perfect little curve. Good job, Josh. You're the best. We're gonna attach the board here with these little pop-in things that pop into these holes. But to line them up, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Not sure if other people have come up with a better way to do this. But what we're doing is popping them backwards through the hole, putting a little bit of paint on the tip of it, and then pressing um, our board to it. And hopefully everything lines up. It was my idea. Just saying. Arcus. And if people have thought of that before, I never heard of it. And then pull it off the same way we rolled it on there. Cool. Yeah. See, we got four red dots now. One, two, three, four. Now we just gotta great. go drill those holes. I think that worked. Yay! Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Maybe they're not long enough. How about Menard? We should go down and see if Menard has. Tonight? Yeah, if this doesn't work, then I think we should for sure. It's a couple days later. This is just how projects go. It's gonna take a very long time to get through the entirety of it. Mostly because I cracked my head open trying to get the clips for this. But I've been out of commission for a little bit. Like, I'll, I'm fine, but but uh, it definitely set us a day or two back. I didn't expect you to say that at all. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened. We went to Menards to get the clips and then uh, I fell over. He passed out and cracked his head open. So he has five staples on the side of his head. A little traumatic, but he's okay. So we're thankful for that. But I got clips from online from Amazon. I can link, it's a multi-pack. Hopefully these work. I think they're a little bit more narrow, but a little bit longer. So hopefully they, they kind of fit. Do it, I'm excited. Oh no. Oh no. They're too narrow, I think. No. They're loose. Yeah. No. It didn't work. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out later. <sighs> We have spent what feels like days trying to figure out how to frame our van. And I think today we finally have a good plan ahead of us. We got these sides in. We'll be able to put the lights into our ship lap, hopefully today. The van with power. 